Alexander Graham Bell, National Geographics for Kids by Barbara Kramer. Wow, what a nice mustache. Table of contents. Alright, here we go. An inventor and teacher. Can you imagine a world with no telephones? You would not be able to call your friends or text them with exciting news. If you needed a ride home, you could not call anyone to let them know. Thanks to Alexander Graham Bell, we now have telephones to make our lives easier. In his own words, the inventor looks upon the world and is not contented with things as they are. He wants to improve whatever he sees. A boy in Scotland. Bell was born on March 3, 1847 in Edinburgh, Scotland. He was the second of three sons. His grandfather and father were also named Alexander Bell, so he went by the nickname Alec. That's a fact. Bell did not have a middle name. He added the name Graham when he was 11 years old. His parents were not upset. They liked his new name. That's Bell at 15. Bell's grandfather and father were both speech teachers. They helped people learn to speak more clearly. Bell's mother, Eliza, was almost totally deaf. She used an ear tube to help her hear. A young Bell with his father and grandfather. Words to know. Ear tube. A horn-shaped tool that guides sound to that ear. To the ear. Exploring. As a boy, Bell enjoyed music. He could listen to a song, then sit down and play it on the piano. He could remember the notes he heard, then he played them back. He liked science too. He collected shells, birds, eggs, butterflies, and bugs. Later, he added skeletons of small animals such as frogs and mice. Bell continued to play music all his life. His mother homeschooled him until he was 10. When he was 11, he went to Royal High School. He graduated when he was 14 years old. Bell created his first invention when he was 11 years old. It was a machine to remove the husk or outer covering from grains of wheat. That's a fact. In his time, when Bell was a boy in Scotland in the 1850s, many things were different from how they are now. Toys. Boys played marbles and girls jumped a rope. Both boys and girls played with large iron hoops. They rolled along the streets. Transportation. People traveled on foot or horseback or by cart or coach. Wealthy people could afford to travel by steamship and trains. School. Many poor children in Edinburgh could not go to school at all. They worked in mines and factories to earn monies to help their family. Communication. The fastest way to send messages was by telegraph. The telegraph machine used electricity to send messages over a wire from one place to another. The messages were in code. Ooh. History. Edinburgh was divided into two sections. The old town stretched along the foot of a rocky cliff. The famous Edinburgh Castle sat at the top of the cliff overlooking the city. Bell lived in the section called the New Town. Young Teacher In 1863, Bell began teaching speech and music. He was 16 years old. Some of his students were older than he was. He also studied his father's visible system, his visible speech system. The system used symbols to show how the mouth, tongue, and lips make sounds. Bell helped his father demonstrate how it worked to groups of people. Words to know, visible, able to be seen. Symbol, a letter or picture used instead of words. Demonstrate, to show how something works. Okay, so this chart shows symbols in the visu visible speech system. Bell and his father later believed the visible speech system could help deaf people learn to talk. 
A new country. Bell family moved to London in 1865. Bell studied and taught there. At one school, he used his father's visible speech system to teach deaf children. Sadly, Bell's younger brother died from a lung disease in 1867. Three years later, his older brother died from the same disease. The Bell's family home in Ontario. Ontario, 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 whatever. Bell's parents said it was because of the polluted air in the large city. In 1870, Bell and his parents sailed to Canada. They moved into a home in Ontario. Bill's, Bell's father said he liked the fresh, clean air there. Words to know, disease and illness, polluted, dirty, not safe. <laughs> okay, Bell, top row. Top row right with students at the Boston school where he taught. Very cool. Bell's father traveled to Boston, Massachusetts. He met the principal of a school for deaf people. The school was looking for a teacher. Bell's father said his son would be good for the job. In 1871, Bell began teaching there. In Boston, there were many inventors. Bell had ideas for inventions too. He taught during the day, then he worked on his inventions late into the night. It did not give him much time for sleep. A page from Bell's notebook where he made sketches of his invention. Genius, genius. A big idea, telegraph. At that time, the telegraph was the fastest way to send messages. Bell wanted to make it work faster. He needed to find a way to send more than one message over a wire at a time. While he was working on that, he got an even bigger idea. What if voices could travel by wire from place to place? That would be much faster than the telegraph. Bell was not good at building things. He needed someone who could turn his sketches or drawings into a working machine. In January 1875, Thomas Watson became his assistant. Bell left his, in his laboratory with his assistant Watson. In his own words, there are no unsuccessful experiments. Every experiment contains a lesson. Bell and Watson tried one thing then another. Many of their experiments did not work, but they did not give up. Telephone transmitter. Telephone receiver. More than a year later, on March 10, 1876, Bell was ready for another test. Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you, he shouted into his machine. Watson was working in another room. He ran to Bell with exciting news. He had heard Bell's voice through the wire. That was the very first telephone call. Bell and Watson working together in Boston, 1877. Presenting the telephone. In June 1876, Bell demonstrated his telephone at a large fair in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. People were amazed. Bell speaking into his telephone in front of a large crowd. The Bell Telephone Company. They lined up to take turns listening and speaking on the telephone. A year later, Bell and three other men created the Bell Telephone Company. They charged people a fee to use telephones in their homes and places of work. Cool facts about Bell. One, 15 year old Bell and his older brother used rubber, tin, and wood to make a talking skull. Two, Bell married Mabel Hubbard. She had been one of his students. Mabel had lost her hearing because of a childhood illness. Three, Bell had a picture of an owl hanging in his lab. His wife gave it to him as a joke because he worked so late at night. Four, Bell was very interested in flight. He built giant kites to help him learn more about it. Five, Bell trained his horse well. When Bell clapped once, the horse took Bell to his lab. Two claps meant go home. Six. On January 25, 1915, Bell made the first coast-to-coast -coast telephone call from New York to California. Seven. 
Bell encouraged his 10 grandchildren to explore new ideas. He created more than 100 experiments for the children to do. New adventures. The Bell, set, blah, 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 blah. the Bell family's second home in Cape Breton in Canada. Breton, Breton, ah. Uh. Bell and his family moved to Washington, D.C. in 1879. Bell set up a lab and began working on different inventions. That's a fact! In 1879, President Rutherford B. Hayes had the first telephone put in the White House. He did not get many calls because only a few people had telephones. In 1898, Bell became president of the National Geographic Society. He made National Geographic magazine better by adding photographs and maps from places all around the world. So he was born in 1847 in Edinburgh, Scotland, March 3rd. 1858, created his first invention. 1862, built a talking machine with his older brother. 1863, begins teaching speech and music. 1870, moves to Ontario, Canada. 1871, begins teaching at a school for the deaf in Boston, Massachusetts. Ha! 1876, makes the first telephone call to his assistant on March 10. 1877, marries Mabel Hubbard on June 11. 1879 moves to Washington, D.C. 1915 makes the first coast to coast telephone call. 1922 dies on August 2nd. Bell works with Helen Keller, a woman who overcame be being both deaf and unable to speak, helping others. Bell died on August 2nd, 1922. In his honor, the whole telephone system was shut down for one minute. Bell never stopped experimenting. His He spent his life helping others in many ways. He taught deaf people to talk. His telephone changed the way we communicate. It made our lives easier and it made Bell one of the best known inventors in the world. All right, let's take a little quiz. Number one, Bell was born in A, Ontario, B, Edinburgh, C, Boston, D, London. If you said B, well, you might be right. All right. Let's do number two. Bell's first invention was a telegraph, a talking machine, B, C, a telephone, or D, a machine to remove husks from grains of wheat. If you said D, your answer is correct. Three, Bell began teaching speech and music when he was A, 16, B, 18, C, 21, D, 25. He said, A, you are correct. Number four. Before Bell invented the telephone, the fastest way to send messages was by A, email, B, steamboat, C, telegraph, D, train. He said, email, you're wrong. It's C, the telegraph. Number five, Bell made the first coast-to-coast -coast telephone call in A, 1876, B, 1915, C, 1920, or D, 1922. If you said B, you are correct, Amundo. Number six, in 1876, Bell showed his telephone at a large fair in A, Boston, B, New York, C, Washington, D.C., or D, Philadelphia. Da, na, na, na. If you said D, Philadelphia, you are correct. The first president to have a telephone in the White House was A, Lincoln, B, Garfield, C, Hayes, or D, Jackson. Da, na, 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 da, da, na, da. If you said C, you might be correct. All right. Well, Bell was an incredible human being. These are some extra words, disease, and illness. Demonstrate to show how something works. Ear tube, a horn shaped tool that guides sound to the ear, and polluted, dirty, not safe, invisible, able to be seen, symbol, a letter, word, a little picture used in some words. Come on!